In my last video I designed a free printed duct fan and measured its performance and in this video we are going to optimize that performance by designing new fans and making some cool experiments with a fog machine. And we are back to 3D printed duct fan experiments. I bought the anemometer and now I can measure the speed of wind and thanks to that I can calculate the flow of the duct fan. And now I just want to go through some quick tests to see if measuring that with the anemometer will actually make any sense because it is not really that simple to measure stuff like this because the flow of air out of the duct fan is not really that uniform. That means the speed of air here is different than it is here. And that is quite hard to like do properly because how should I place the anemometer to measure the velocity properly? I have no idea, that's something that I have to figure out. I also have a really cool idea. I want to show you how each of those fans perform with a fog machine to show you how actually the air flows out of the duct fan. The problem is I don't have a fog machine, so I either have to borrow one, buy one or build one myself. We'll see if that will be even possible. Let's try to divide this video into sections. Maybe it will make a bit more sense that way. So. I tried to make my own fog machine and I actually failed a bit but it wasn't a total failure and I learned something out of that so let me tell you a little bit about how I tried to make a fog machine. I just got back from the pharmacy and it was a really funny experience because imagine me going into the pharmacy and be like Hi, do you have 5 liters of distilled water and some glycerin? But fortunately I have everything that I need to make fog and I know that I have everything that I need to make fog because I already tested this idea at home and it works but I need to improve a little bit the efficiency. The efficiency was a big problem right from the beginning because in order to create a significant amount of fog you need actually to mix distilled water with glycerin and then heat it up quickly. So I tried a few different methods Actually none of them really worked that well and heating it up with a candle like I tried is not really the best idea and probably using some kind of electric heat where you can actually control the temperature is definitely a better idea and that's what is used in like professional fog machines. My fog making experiment wasn't a total failure because I was able to produce some fog it just you know wasn't enough to actually see what's going on in the duct fan so I bought a professional fog juice and also a professional fog making machine so hopefully that will help a bit and I also printed a lot a lot of parts here I have six fans and I will have ten probably maybe even more additional fans here is half of the duct fan so that you can see what's actually going on because with the full duct fan it, it just wasn't really visible And here is my setup, uh, the half of the duct fan idea was actually pretty cool because you can see what's going on inside and I was actually really surprised that the centrifugal force is not pushing the air out of the duct fan, like to the side. The whole airflow seems to be flowing from the right to left on this shot so everything is fine even with such a simple straight blade fan design. I will probably end up putting way too many shots of that in here, but it looks really cool. It's only 240 frames per second, but actually the result is pretty decent. But that wasn't the end of playing with the fog, because I did something cool that I will show you at the end of this video. To simplify the fan design process, I designed a parametric fan. It's not really fully parametric, as sometimes you have to tweak some sketches and some stuff in order to get it working perfectly. But with parameters you can actually modify quite a lot of stuff in this fan so that simplified designing 15 or maybe even 16 fans in the end. The diameter was actually the same for all of the fans so I decided to modify only the number of blades and the angle of each blade. I printed these fans with PLA on Ender 3, DIY Prusa i3 and CR10. While I am removing supports from my prints I would like to say huge thanks to all of my Patreons for their support. If you want to check out my Patreon, there is a link in the description. And here is my measuring setup. I will log everything on my computer. Here I have a spreadsheet with everything already prepared for that. I will measure the airspeed with the anemometer at four different locations. And then I will also do three different 
a garbage back test for each fan and for each power setting so that's the total of 30 additional tests for each fan and thanks to that we'll be able to see if actually uh, those readings from the anemometer and from the garbage bag are the same because they should be. I'm trying to figure out the measuring procedure for the spinning and testing all of the fans and that's why I attach this short hose to the duct fan because I'm trying to make the airflow a bit more uniform. I want the airflow, the airspeed to be exactly the same everywhere. And the problem was that air in the center of the duct fan was actually flowing into the duct fan and now out of the duct fan. So how should I calculate the airflow if the air velocity is not constant? And here with the fog this effect is even more visible and probably there is some kind of a low pressure zone in the center of the fan. I decided to stick to my measuring procedure with the anemometer and the garbage bag and later compare the results and maybe find a way to actually calculate that. I ended up with 16 fans and 16 fans is seriously a lot of measurements. It took me like 3 days to measure everything I wanted and I even wasn't able to measure some of the fans at higher throttles uh, because actually those were pretty unbalanced and the wall duct fan was shaking like crazy. And here are the plots based on the data that I measured. As you can see, this file is just massive. On the left here in the table, we have all of the values that I measured of the airflow, the garbage bag test, and then we have two summary tables at the bottom uh, for each fan. And then in the brackets, I have number of blades and angle of the blade in degrees. And here are the plots. Here is the airflow, that's pretty straightforward. Here's how it looks like for each fan. And then airspeed at four different points. Those lines are pretty close together, so that's cool. Back fuel time, it drops massively when you go from 30 to 40% throttle, and this is the case for every fan, so that also looks fine. And then you have a massive plot with anemometer test and garbage bag test separately. And there's just a lot of lines, you cannot really see a lot in here. What we can see is that fan number three with uh, 5 blades and 40 degrees angle actually performed the best. But keep in mind that its airflow is not even close to 400 cubic meters per hour uh, because this is just a measurement with the anemometer and as I mentioned it's not precise at all. I think we can trust the garbage bag test a bit more because that seems to work pretty well and in this case fan number 13, 3 blades and 40 degrees angle performed the best. And the difference is probably connected to the fact that we actually connect something to the duct fan, so there is higher pressure at the output nozzle, and because of that, fans behave differently and perform differently uh, for different scenarios. And then we have last six plots for the anemometer test and garbage bag test, and each plot is separated for each number of blades of the fan. With the anemometer test, fan number three performed the best, and as we can see, even with four or three blades, still the fan with 50 or 40 degrees angle performed the best out of all of them. And then when you go to the garbage bag test, we can see something pretty interesting because right here, the best performing fan is actually a fan with 30 degrees angle. It looks like if you have a high pressure at the output, actually reducing the angle of the blade helps a lot because as you can see, for five blades, the best performer was five blades, 30 degrees. 
and it actually performed quite a lot better than for example fan number 3 that is 5 blades and 40 degrees then we can go to 4 blades fans and here once again 30 degrees is the winner and for 3 blades fan number 13 30 degrees once again and the winner of all of the fans is actually fan number 13 with 3 blades and 30 degrees which is quite surprising and even the fan that is not here on the plot that is fan number 16 with 8 blades and 30 degrees uh, was actually not performing as well as fan number 13 that is here I hope you enjoyed this short data analysis section of this video. If you have any tips, leave them all in the comments and if you want to take a look at this file, you can find it in the description. And now it's time for a sponsor message. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, a perfect place for creative people. And I think I can consider myself a creative person, but I'm definitely bad at logo design and I want to design myself a logo. Fortunately, Skillshare can help me with that. Logo design with Draplin Secrets of Shape, Type and Color by Aaron Draplin is a perfect class if you also want to design a logo on your own. It's not just a tutorial on how to use an illustrator, but actually a great guide on how to start researching, experiment with the shapes and properly use the colors. And even include some references to Poland, which is pretty cool because I am from Poland. If logo design is not your thing, no worries, you can find thousands of online classes on Skillshare on any topic you want. Music, productivity, woodworking, you can find almost everything on Skillshare and if you will be one of the first 1000 people that will click the link in the description, you'll get one month free trial of Skillshare, so go check it out. Thanks a lot to Skillshare for sponsoring and now back to the act fun. Alright, so here are the parts for the duct fan experiment. This white part is exactly the same, this one is a little bit different and then I have some additional parts for the filter and the spacer for the filter, this will go here like so. And I want to try if this kind of a duct fan can be used as an air cleaning solution for my workshop and for that I will use the 775 motor with the old propeller just to test if it works, this motor is a little bit more quiet and should be powerful enough for this use case. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any appropriate piece of felt that would act as a filter in here. Uh, so this part of this project is not yet finished. I still have to test it and this will probably take a month or two. So I will update you how this thing works in one of my future videos. So stay tuned for that. When I was at my internship in Ireland at CIT Cork Institute of Technology, I worked on 3D printed airfoils that you can see right here. And I still have this design so I thought I will print it and try to just play with it, with the fog and with those airfoils. And here you can see the results. Some of them weren't impressive here, I tried with the duct fan but the flow was just too turbulent to actually see anything. And here you can even see how turbulent the airflow is from the duct fan. And then I thought I would just use a piece of glass to cover the airfoil on the other side and that worked pretty well. Those small experiments inspired me quite a lot to build a wind tunnel so maybe in the future on this channel I will build a wind tunnel. If that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.